and good evening welcome to wednesday live uh, do not adjust your set because ted's live yes everything seems to be working this week sound light cameras action except for everything and there's people in chat as well although i've just lost the chat and give you a moment while i try and find where i've put the chat there we are <coughs> hey uh, right, yes, welcome to everybody that's joining me tonight for what I think will be the last in the build series of the Land Schla Lands. Where's the box gone? The Land Wasser Schlepper. Yes, the, the tank boat, boat tank, tanky boat, boat thing. Yes, it's took me many weeks of trying to learn how to say it, and I still can't say it. But Never mind. Uh, we'll get on and we'll uh, we'll see what tonight brings. I think tonight we're going to do um, just some finishing touches, um, and then I'll, I'll sh well I'll show you in a minute. We'll do some finishing touches and we'll do a bit of weathering and uh, gl gluing the final bits and pieces on, and that'll be about it. And then, of course, if time permits we'll have a look in the box uh, for the next build that's on the bench uh, I, I think i did yeah i'm sure i told you what it was going to be if you've been watching the show you'll know what it's going to be but we'll have a look at it we'll have a look in the box uh, we'll think about what how and how we're going to do it uh, maybe take some suggestions of yourself uh, we'll see how it goes but without further ado let's get on with tonight's tipple uh, tonight's tipple is um, this one. It's uh, Albalo, pronounced uh, Abelua. Abelua. Yeah, it's a Speyside whiskey. It's uh, from the. Uh, it's from more or less the east coast of Scotland, across the uh, the other side of the Isles, uh, towards um, Edinburgh. Uh, that sort of way. It's Speyside, so there's not as much um, uh, smokiness in this one. Um, it's it's really nice if you uh, if you're not too keen on the peaty, smoky, bonfire type uh, whiskies. This is quite a nice quaffing whisky. Uh, it's really uh, mellow, really sweet. Um, as you can see, the colour it's got a golden amber. Uh, I don't know if you can quite see that in the light. It's it's a golden amber with a, a very it's got a very sort of backgroundy ruby colour to it. It's sort of a, sort of a, a reddish like a, a hue, almost like a, having a red paint filter in it. So that um, yeah, the nose yes. Well, I I do this I do the sniffing off camera because you can't see it. Uh, yes. Uh, it's it's nicely rounded. Uh, there's no, as I say, there's definitely no smokiness in this one. Uh, yeah, there's no smokiness. And how does it taste? Well, that's the important part in it. Um, yeah, let's have a go at this. Uh, oh yeah, it's yeah, it's quite. Um, it's quite you get quite a big buttery type hit. There's certainly uh, a vanilla in there. Um, you can taste the sweetness, like maple syrup, brown sugar, uh, and fruit. Um, I have I've heard it described as having a um, Christmas cake type taste to it. It's got all the nuts and <clears throat> the chocolates and the raisins. And I think I could quite agree with them there. Yeah, it is nice. Uh, finish. Yep. Uh, yeah, it doesn't come back and bite you. It's really mellow. It's nice and smooth. Uh, yeah, it, now it's a 12-year-old whiskey. Uh, the, the, according to the bottle, it's uh, matured in oak casks. Uh, yeah uh <clears throat> it's it's sherry and uh sherry oak casks and it's very nice yes it's nice uh let's have a look on the website see what the uh 
experts say about it. Yep, it's got a style. It's got a body of about they give it three. Uh, richness, it is quite rich. It's very rich. They give it a four out of five. Zero smokiness it, because it doesn't have any smoke at all. And sweetness, yes, it is quite a sweet whiskey. It's very nice on the palate. Very nice at the back of the throat as well. And they give it a three. I would give them this. I would go for the same for that. I would give them the three as well. But yes, a very nice quaffing whiskey. Fact one, I probably wouldn't open any more. I wouldn't put water, water with this one. You could, but I'm not going to. Because uh, it's quite nice on its own. It's quite sweet, quite open. And certainly a difference from the Islay's. Uh, the smokiness, the Speyside ones. If you don't like your bonfires, this is the one for you. Uh, for my votes out of 10, I'd say a good, uh, it's well up there, a good eight and a half. So that's it for the Abalua. Uh, uh, Abalua single Speyside, single malt Scotch whiskey, 12 year old. Available once again in your all, all your local supermarkets at very reasonable price as well. So there we go. Anyway, that's that one done. So let's get them out of the way and let's see who's in chat tonight. Whilst I I just carry on with this one a little bit. <coughs> uh, right, we'll go back to the top of the chat and I'll give you a few shout outs. Welcome to everybody that's in. Uh, yeah, uh, so Lynn was first in. I think she was in since last week as well. Uh, and probably just hasn't been away. She's just had a bunk in the corner uh, with a hot water bottle and a blanket. So, yep. Oh, uh, she, she was in first with William. William was in next, followed by Ghost Rider. So, good evening to you. Sprugloop, there we go. There better be a puppy tonight, he says. Well, there is a puppy. The best I could do was this puppy. Uh, I've borrowed it off Skylar because that, that's the only puppy. I've got around to getting at the moment. It's it's her Lego puppy, but it's still cute. It's still a puppy. Yes, it's a puppy. <coughs> yeah, there we are. I'll put him there for the moment. Uh, uh is in. Colin's in. Yes, hello, Colin. Uh, William, Steve, one three one. Good evening, Steve. Uh, Lord, hi, Bobbins. Uh, yeah, there's tunes. We had the tunes. You probably just came in on the pre-roll just as I was. That's just to warm the system up. Uh, the reason we do the pre-roll at the beginning is just so that we can get all the sound and the balances right and make sure that the uh, the, the video is actually streaming properly across to uh, to YouTube. And it gives us that sort of uh, idea. That's why we do it, uh, just, to, just to get things going. But uh, yeah, because it, it's all working. So we seem to be working tonight. <coughs> uh, uh, Lord Hi Bobbins, greetings to you. Uh, Lord Barclay the Third said, "Is that Ted on the guitar?" Well, somebody actually said Ted's on the tambourine, but tonight I was on the triangle. Yeah, because they won't let me have the guitar. Yeah, so I was on the triangle tonight. Oh, uh, so where else? Pete Rogers. Good evening, Peter. Lord Barclay the Third. I've done that one. Wendy Hickson. Good evening to you as well. Uh, Lynn says she's got two days off. Brilliant. Make the most of it, Lynn. Make the most of it. Uh, Pete Rogers, Graham M, Graham M, Sarah Jane, oops, wrong button. Telefixed, you, YouTube back up and running as normal, says Athol, and he's here as well, says, so, uh, yep. <coughs> uh, uh, Chris is in, good evening, Chris. I, yeah, I caught the stream before. What, one day, you, you must show us how to take apart and put back a traditional watch. Uh, that will be a nice af evening's viewing. Uh, yeah, show, show us a bit of watch repairing or, or the inside workings of a watch and what it all does. Because it's a, it's a master of engineering inside a watch. We'd like to see that. So, well, I'd like to see that. So put that in your, put that in your notes and, and think about that, Chris. <coughs> oh, where else are we? Graham, Sarah, Willian, Athol, Scale Modeling Chaos. Good evening to you. Ghost Rider, uh, everyone else, uh, uh, they're all talking about themselves. Uh, hang on, is this the other half of the terrible tins? A good looking one. Oh, that, I thought you were talking about me and Crispy. Yeah, it's me. Welcome to Ted's Wednesday Alcohol, Alcohol Anonymous meeting with the occasional model including. Well, you, you, me, you may have noticed that me and Chris, we have a little tipple 
just when we're with, with you all tonight uh, and we have a relaxing evening at the bench no pressure it's not like e-models where it's all pressure and trying to make make a good show of things which we fail miserably at but never mind that what we do uh we all know it's teachers says phil east yeah uh, i've got some um bells downstairs but i usually use bells for mixing making long drinks when you know when you fancy that that long drink and you want to put some lemonade with your whiskey or some coke or some ginger something like that but this is uh, yeah other than water don't put anything in your single malts I'll, uh, Abelor, uh says Graham M. Glad you're enjoying it. I am Graham. Yes, I, it's a very nice. I've not a lot of it left <coughs> uh, because this is this is the one that if I'm going out in the motorhome, if I'm going for a weekend away in the motorhome, this gets stuffed away, uh, stacked uh, in the back of the cupboard uh, before uh, Mrs. Ted finds out. So that's what happens to that one. So that's why they're not left. Uh, Steve one three one. Yeah, it's, it's a spot. Brown sugar. Yeah, yeah, just like, just like, uh, just like a brown sugar. So um, <clears throat> this is where you're all talking amongst yourselves as I'm rabbiting on about whiskies. Uh, uh, it's a puppet. Uh, yep, that's the puppet. Uh, uh, where are we gonna? What are you gonna do on your day off, Lynn? Says Steve. Uh, uh, Sprue loose. Uh, uh, Well, what were we on about? <coughs> uh, right, I think I've lost it. Spids have several vids doing that. Says uh, Chris in a reply to uh, Spid. Sprugloo says, I have a Rolex from Thailand that needs fixing. Uh, that'd be good to watch. You watch, get that, yeah. Uh, then they're all talking amongst themselves. I'm watching Ted Shaw from hanging out with Colin and the others, catching up on sleep if I can. Yeah, the Fox is on at six o'clock tomorrow, so yeah, early times. It's, is it the midnight show we call in tomorrow? I can't remember. Yeah, uh, Sarah's okay. She's on her third Malibu. Excellent. So, shall we get on with some building uh, uh, and just do the waffling as as we carry on and things like that? Uh, don't forget, if you want to catch my attention, because I don't always get chance to look at the chat, especially if I'm doing concentration things, because I'm a guy and we can't do two things at once. Uh, do type your message in bold so it um, it stands out. And then if I happen to look up and see it, uh, I, I can see it then. If I, if I miss it, I do apologise. Uh, but keep typing it until I do see it and I'll do whatever I can. But thanks. And if there's anybody out there in chat land, that means you, that's... Uh, uh, sorry, out there in video land, that means you, and you're not in chat, come and say hello. Um, yeah, just type a few things in the chats around here somewhere. It'll be on one of your platforms. If you're on the, if you're on your phone, you can click live chat and it'll come up and you could just type in the bottom. But come and say hello. But in the meantime, if you do want to support me, um, yeah, it's a way of sort of keeping the channel going and finding things to build and being able to afford uh, to buy paints and glues and models and things like that because i'm quickly running out of them don't forget you can support me on patreon go across there uh yeah for as little as a pound a month you can become a member of the crew and uh support me on my voyage of discovery into the model world or you can use super chat by clicking the little dollar sign down at the bottom of chat somewhere and uh give uh, giving me a little tip as as you as you tip the waiter in the bar for a good service and things like that but anyway let's move things out of the way and we'll keep the puppy uh we'll, we'll keep the puppy over there uh and we'll bring on the land uh the boat tank yes hey well here he is and i have uh been busy from last week um <clears throat> Yeah, I have been busy. I've been doing things as I promised um, because I got the tracks on and I more or less get, got the got the track sag right because what I did was use some glue just to glue the track onto the rollers and then I got some rolled up pieces of paper, rolled them up and then just stuck rolled up pieces of paper between the body and the track 
a weather glue set that gives them uh, a nice little bit of track sag. So I've also painted the wheels as well. Uh, you can't probably can't quite see it on the video, but I painted the uh, the the rubbers on the wheels. Now these I would have done in uh, grey black, something like that. But I, in this instance, I've done them just in pure black because the tank itself is grey uh, and it wouldn't really have stood out but it does if, if you could see it in real life um, you'd see how it uh, it actually does make a little difference uh, the tracks themselves they've just been put together with a staple you just see it glistening in the bottom there uh, just a, an office stapler just staple them together and that works quite well so there we are that's that done uh, I don't think anything's dropped off just yes something has just dropped off never mind <coughs> yeah and I did I did glue the rear view mirror back on uh, but it fell off again I don't know where it is but that's it uh, I didn't glue the cabin on uh, what I did I just the, the anchor here shows it all being glued in position but I didn't glue it on so what I did I just glued the anchor to the body and then you can take the top off and have a look inside so there we are <coughs> will I be painting the dog the puppy tonight it's it's no no it's not my puppy it's it's just on loan it's a little lego puppy it's best best we could do till I can get one uh, yeah uh, when 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 my pocket money comes, I'll I'll send off and get a puppy. Maybe for the next time we'll do some puppy. We'll do some puppy painting. Uh, I have very much enjoyed this build, says Steve one three one. Was it you, Steve, that said you'd got one from E Models? Uh, I know that somebody in chat said they'd got one from E Models. If it was you, let us know. Uh, <coughs> where we at? Show that one. Uh, uh, Edward Leonard's in. Good evening to you, Edward. Uh, 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 right. Uh, so, well, what we're we going to do? Oh, yes. Another thing I should tell you about is the decals. There are not many decals in this kit. In fact, there are three of them, and the. Uh, decal sheet gives you options for different types of vehicles. Uh, if I can find the instructions, I don't know where the instructions have gone. Hang on, it might be a wobbly camera because the instructions are underneath the uh, tripod. Hang on. Yeah, sorry about that. The instructions have to be underneath the tripod. Uh, right, the instructions give you uh, decals for three different types. Well, three uh, versions. There's the one in Riga, the Soviet Union. There's the one in the Baltic Sea. And there's this one, which was, doesn't say where it is. But it's a good job to give you three types of decals because they're all generally the same number. And when I come to put these three little decals on, that one went on fine, that one was a bit iffy, and that one totally fell to bits. Um, so what I had to do was like salvage uh, from the other three sets, the other two sets of decals, I had to salvage decals and cut them up and put them on. Now it's, it's not quite the same it's 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 a little bit different to be honest but i think once i put some weathering on there nobody's gonna notice uh right let's move the chat down because the chat has moved and i can't see it uh right yeah <coughs> ah, there we go uh so yes, so it, it incurred a lot of swearing, uh, great use of the optimizer, trying to uh, cut decals and stick them all down. Uh, but yeah, it's done. Nobody's going to know, apart from 
everybody I've just told. But that's it. They, they, it's all done. Uh, so all we've got to do now is uh, I've got, I think, the final, final part to stick on, which is one of the propellers. So we could do that. And then we can have a look at maybe just having a chat, do some weathering, or things like that. But here is the propeller. Uh, propellers, propellers are not brass. Well, some of them are brass. Depends how much you can afford. But I would think uh, these would be a little bit too big to be brass or really shiny brass anyway. Plus, once they've been submerged in salt water and subject to cavitation and things like that, they don't become brass. So what we're going to do, I'm going to give this a coat of my favourite stuff for propellers. Uh, A.K. True Metal. Really nice stuff. This is all bronze. Dead easy to do and we'll show you. So this is uh, the propeller just primed in black because black is the best stuff. <coughs> uh, uh, what, yeah, talking about Dick Emery on here uh, in the chat. Yeah, I remember the Dick Emery show. That was on a Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening as well, wasn't it? Oh, you are awful. Uh, that, I think, was... Um, was he on the BBC? Or was he on ITV? I think he might have been on ITV, like um, Thames TV. I could have been right. Or, but was it Dick Emery? It, it was Dick Emery that was um, chairman of the um, Hornby Model Makers Group, wasn't he? Is that perhaps what you're talking about? Where's the doggy, Sarah Jane? Yeah, the doggy. Oh, we'll put. Where is the doggy? <coughs> we'll put the. We'll put the doggy. On there. There we go. Doggy. <coughs> is the dog house trained? Yep. The yep. These ger. It, yeah, the German German shepherds uh, are incredibly amazing dogs, and I believe that during the war, whether I don't know whether it was the First World War or the Second World War, uh, the German shepherd, as the dog was known of, known as that's when it got its, that's when it's it got its name of Alsatian, I believe. Because um, they didn't like it being associated with the Germans, so uh, it became the Alsatian. There's a bit of useless information for you. So that's a bit done. See, as quick as that, and we have a bronzed, bronzed propeller. Really nice this stuff. I like it. It's good for metallic effects. It does take a varnish. Uh, it's very fragile. So if you put it on a piece that's going to be handled a lot. Uh, don't use it for that. Use another metal coat or something like that. And If you put too much on you could just rub it off. If you put too little on you could put a bit more on. Brilliant. So we'll just leave it a few minutes just to let it sort of set. It's a wax. So it sets and then we just polish the brush strokes out of it. And we have a shiny propeller. Uh, Pete Rogers says, what well, is something to do with the Airfix Club? That Yes, that was it. The Airfix Club, not the Hornby Club. Yes, he was um, chairman or something of or, su or such of the Airfix Club. Um, he wrote uh, articles in the newspaper as sort of a, the editor um, of, of said club and and such. But uh, yes, apparently he was a prof prolific model maker. What his models were, I don't know. But in the early days of modelling. This stuff's all more or less 
dried and ready for polishing already you just turn the q-tip brown and just polish it a little bit gives it that metallic shine not we don't want too much oh I did <clears throat> uh, why's that dog got a donut on its back donuts yep yeah, I, I I wondered that as well. Why does the Lego dog have a thing on its back? What, what are you going to stick to the dog? I don't know. Yeah, but this is just a Lego dog borrowed from Skylar. Don't tell her. Unless she, she might even be watching. So if you're watching, hi Skylar, bedtime. Yep, so there we go. That's that one done. So that... Uh, <coughs> it hasn't got any pockets. Lego donut. Yep, right. Oh, okay. I say that's... Yep. Oh, right, we'll chuck that over there. Uh, get rid of that. Uh, take the dog off of there. And we'll take the roof off. Because I don't want to break anything else. And we could prepare for a fix, uh, a fixing the very last bit. Now, where did I put the glue? I uh, watch that doggy in the window. I do hope that doggy's for sale. Oh, oh. Uh, okay, so it's time for as usual. I'm sure you've already done it on Chris's channel. Maybe you haven't. Uh, dogs fell out of course yeah um belly and bench what's in your belly and what's on your bench yeah i do i do like to know what's on the bench even though that the belly is important uh because uh it's always interesting to find out what else you've been building uh and i think as lockdown or is is being muted to end here in the UK in some form or another within the next few weeks uh, it may be interesting to know will you have will you have your model finished in time uh, will there be something else planned after it so there we are uh, yeah just just changing just changing subject a minute that that there is officially the last bit Yay! yeah the last bit to be glued on apart from the uh, rear view mirror which keeps falling off and I haven't a clue where it's gone so that that goes on there yeah, so that's that glued yes it let's have a look at it now from from the end Oh yeah, that's looking good. <coughs> uh, I wonder if there's any celebs in this group. You never know. Yeah, or would they tell us if they were? Could could there be something like Pete Waterman or Rod Stewart or somebody or anybody else famous watching this show? Never know. Yeah, because they watch YouTube as well. And I might pop up on their suggested watch list. So, yeah, it could be. You never know. So, if if you're famous, we won't tell anybody, but do come and say hi. Uh, <coughs> uh, where are we at? Uh, Lord High Bobbin says, Billy, burgers and potato washels. Waffles, bench, nothing. Uh, yeah, get some on the bench. Yeah, come along and have a have a group build. We we can have a look at what we're going to build next time. Come on, but yeah, I'm also going to have to be spending a bit of time at the bench because I'll have to change all the thumbnails and everything and do some photoshopping and make some yeah more pictures of about what I'm going to build next. So we could do that. Uh, Sarah Jane. Uh, 
she was a she did go out on a Saturday. She was a tele addict. Except, uh, she wasn't a tele addict. Except, except, uh, no. I'll start that again. Sarah Jane was always out. Ah, yes. It, it's more fitting that now, Sarah. Yeah, you were always out, and you were a tele addict apart from when motor racing was on. Uh, belly, P and M, pulverized soup, bench, space wolves, combat units. Uh, Cool. Yeah, a bit of Warhammer there. Yeah, did you see? I, I was doing my Warhammer on Wednesday night. Yes, that's progressing as well. Uh, <coughs> nothing in belly as I'm on a five sixteenth diet. Uh, five sixteen diet and still got the Scammel Commander to finish. All oh, right, which um, which manufacturer have you got for the Scammel? I've got the uh, Thunder Models one. I've got that to do, but I'll be doing that as a private build because uh, I just want to chill out and do that one and when I get round to doing it. I'll probably take some photographs of it, but not put myself under any pressure of filming and things like that. I just want to uh, build and enjoy it. Not that I don't enjoy doing this, it's just I'd like to take my time and do that because it's sort of a... Um, I'm doing that for a, uh, a memorial type build to a, to a very old friend who who died a few years ago so that's what I'll be doing with that there's my scammel uh, mine's a scammel pioneer uh, I'll be doing that uh, Sarah belly chicken curry flipping hot and balabu uh, which which I've lost count of it was three when you came in Sarah I don't know where it is now uh, bench more malibu and cherry bakewells uh, cherry bakewells uh, uh, Steve one three one yogurt would be nice to help. That yes, yogurt goes well with the chicken curry. I just feel like a chicken curry now, or a curry. I just feel like getting a delivery in its brown paper bag with the foil container of curry and the foil container of rice with a few extras. You know the poppadoms and um, some. Uh, uh, some nan. Oh yeah, I just I'm just in the mood for that now. Maybe, maybe it's the drink. What's up? Oh, oh yes. Oh yes, it's nice that. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, I do. I do. I wonder if Mrs H would uh, permit a curry tomorrow. I feel like I feel like a curry. S Sarah's put me in the mood for a curry. Uh, where else? Oh. Uh, uh, spruces, a billy, mac and cheese, bench, waiting for the postman tomorrow morning. Oh, what? Yes. What's been bought and what's what's coming What's coming on the bench? Yeah, yeah, that could be another thing. What's arriving on the bench? What have you ordered? <coughs> Billion purchases, I think Chris said it was the other day. Oh. Uh, Accurate armor says Pete. Uh, building it for a mate who owns a few. Yeah, I had a friend who owned some scammels as well. He was um, uh, sort of. Uh, ch uh, I don't know if he was quite chairman, but we certainly were well into the scammel uh, appreciation society or something similar. So I think they might be knew each other. Uh, but they're, they're fantastic machines, um, and even. Uh, the more modern ones were still fantastic machines. Or oh, beer is better to cool you down, says Graham, uh, when it comes to curry. Uh, mind you, mixing with Malibu might not work. Just stick on the Malibu. Yeah, after that, yeah, you just want to eat more curry. Uh, I think I'll have a curry also tomorrow. Yeah, let's have a joint curry night. Curry night at the bench. That could be an idea. Uh, yeah, I wonder if I wonder if I'd be allowed to fetch the curry up to the. Um, yeah, you can all join online. I'll fix up a, a joint video link. Uh, we'll all have a curry night one night. Friday night curry night. A, fr a Friday night curry night. Uh, what's arriving on the bench sounded better. <laughs> uh, Sprugler says tornado with lots of aftermarket. Don't tell the missus. Ah, yes, shush, yes. Uh, belly is full, chicken and leek pie. Oh, I like that. Uh, bench, stormtrooper. 
nearly finished. Cool. Yeah, I better get on with some, do some of this, aren't I? Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use uh, weathering pencils. I don't know why I've got that box because it's empty. Uh, I'm going to use weathering pencils because it's less messy than paint uh, and I can do the messy painting uh, offline. Um, I can get the paints and things out and do that. Um, as has been discussed I have got a rope fender to go around here but I can't find the um, uh, beeswax that was going to coat it in to keep all the threads down so I can't put that on just yet. Uh, but when I um, when I get round and do it, I'll post some pictures up. So keep an eye out on Skipper Scale Models, the Facebook page, and you'll be able to see it. Uh, but it may, make, it may make a reprieve in a few weeks' time just to do some bits and pieces on it. Uh, if the next kit is going a little bit slow, we can bring this back and do some uh, do some more work on it. But yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Billy's full. Yeah, curry wasn't my choice. It was delivered by the hot meals guy. Yeah, he had shepherd's pie yesterday with a slice of fruit cake. Mm -hmm. uh, stopped eating curries as I only eat Chinese curry. I don't like Chinese curry. It has to be the proper uh, vindaloo type, but well, not vindaloo, but it has to be the proper Indian curry for me because because it's nice. Uh, right, let's have a look. Uh, got some weathering and um, we need to find the right one because I want to do some I don't want streaking dirt not yet anyway gunmetal dark chipping for light chipping forward I think what I need is in here and dark aluminium that'll do we'll start with that one and then we'll move on to doing some rust streaks and things like that so get my get a pot of water I'll just put that over there and we could start this uh, just picking out some where areas of wear and obviously these bits that are up the side of the tank are steps so they've got to get some wear aren't they So what is next on everybody else's wish list? Whether you bought it or not, or what you wish, you, what would you wish for? What's on your wish list? Uh, what would you like to buy from? It, yeah, it, I don't, yeah, this isn't an e-models sort of uh, channel or anything like that from anywhere. Uh, these pencils are pretty good. If you've never used them before, I would certainly recommend them. I know that Colin has gone out and bought the full set. I think Colin's enjoying them as well. Uh, so what we need to do is we're going to pick out all the bits where the paint would get rubbed off. So, yeah. well, these are good because, as I say, it's, there's no mess. I think I just, what I'll do, I'll work on one side so you can see what's happening tonight as we chat. And we'll do some weather and streaking effects. Uh, what, we're gonna, what I am going to do as well for this, excuse me a minute while I go to the bench and find uh, uh. yeah th this is my weathering drawer uh, I've got a number of things in here that we could use uh, we have I'm not going to put any mud on this one because I think 
uh, with it being sort of a boaty type thing, it's going to be in the water a lot, so mud and stuff would watch, wash off. We could do some beach sand. We could put some of that on. We could do that's a pigment. We could do some of that. We could uh, put it in like the areas around the winch and things like that, as though it's got accumulated in there. We can have. What else can we have? What's that one? Fresh rust. A little bit of that. Yes, we'll use some of that. Do on European earth, not yet anyway. Uh, pigment fixer, we'll need that. Yes. The winch looks like a head resting in its hands. Uh, Oh, I can't see. I, uh, I, I, can't see I can't quite see that, but never mind. Right, that's what I was looking for. Naval ships weathering colours, streaky grime, streaking grime for light grey ships. Yes, it's gonna work. That and yes, that's that's a definite. We'll have some of that. Um, uh, we don't want mud. What have we got? Filters? No, we don't need filters. We have some slimy right light grime. Yeah, I think we'll use some of that as well because um, slippery, watery, um, slimy, um, seaweed, that sort of thing. Beach sand, yeah, we'll have that. Fresh rust, we'll have that. Uh, rust wash, mm, maybe, yeah, we might, yeah, we might do some of that because we could do some streaks with that. Uh, streaking rust effects. Yep, I'll do some of that. Uh, what? <coughs> right, let's have a look at people's wish lists. Uh, do -do -do. Uh, do -do. Uh, yeah, the uh, chat's gone up a little bit, so I'm just trying to catch up. Uh, to, uh, Pete Rogers, I'm eagerly awaiting the Airfix 135K2 ambulance. All right, yep. Uh, quick hide the pencils, Sarah Jane. Uh, I have a whole armoured train in 135th in a stash. Be about six feet long when I built it, but got no room for it till I've moved house. Built in bits, yes, keep it in boxes, and then when you move house, put it all together again. Uh, wish list is the 116th Armatech Tiger Tank. All oh, right, yes, that's the um, that's one for the Imperial War Museum, or they sell it there anyway. The, uh, the yeah, that would be my wish list. That's that's the metal one, isn't it? Uh, the full metal one. It's almost like building a, a real tank. Uh, uh, I think what I want from Santa says Athol is a 135th scale P51 Mustang painted up as a red tails as in the film. I've never seen the film. I've heard of the film. I've never watched it. But yeah, I appreciate what you're on about there. Uh, a lot of, uh, Sarah says uh, she's about 30 112th F1 cars to build. Nowhere to put them. That's a problem. Big models need a lot of space. So, so yeah. Uh, as much as he enjoys scale modelling, says Graham M, he enjoys the new Lego stuff. Top of the wish list would be the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, that's big. That's big. Uh, I don't have any particular kits on the wish list right now. He's getting tempted to try a ship kit, though. Right. Buy ship kit. Buy... A small one, uh, as I mean small, a smallest, you know, not not the one two hundred scale Titanic, because that'll blow your mind. Do something like um, I know it's a Revell kit, but it's a pretty good kit. Uh, do the Compass Rose or something like that. The um, uh, the that's that sort of ship, something like that. World War Two. You can even if you wanted to, uh, you could make it radio controlled uh, or Start like the 135th scale to me a pibber, something like that. Um, or the 
Um, even some of the uh, M uh, motor torpedo boats, the MTBs, I think Ravel do them, and um, a, a Taleri, they, they do them. They're nice kits. Uh, but the uh, <coughs> uh, so so there we go. So yeah, have I have a got have I got a smaller kit first? The, you, you don't want to do something like the USS Enterprise aircraft carrier or, or anything like that. Yeah, if you if you've not built ships before, do something smaller of a bigger scale. You know, like. Okay, um, one twenty fourth, one forty eighth, something like that. Uh, what else can we do? What else is in this box? Oh, uh, I never know what's in it. Pigment fixer. We'll keep that out. We'll keep them. Keep that. I had some salt. Um, I've got some salt streaks somewhere. That'll come in nice for this. But I can't find them. They must be somewhere else. Well, hang on, I think I've spotted it. <coughs> Dark wash for wood decks. No, that's not what I want. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a, bit, a bit of a loss there where that's gone. There it is. Salt streaks for ships. Yes, that'll do. So we can get rid of this now. Uh, would like to see. Uh, would like to see a release of the HMS Fearless on a larger scale. That is a nice ship. Yes. Um, I think that was still in service up until the eighties. Well, did that go to the Falklands? Fearless. I'm sure it did. Yeah, that was a nice ship. Uh, I think was it even the second? Was it even out in the Second World War? I can't remember. So anyway, we'll do. We'll get on with this a little bit more. Thanks, Ted. I've seen a few nice Tamiya ones and a few Revel. If, yeah, go for it. Yeah, build a build a ship. They are nice to do. I obviously, I like ships, but I've just burnt myself out on them at the moment. So, so we could do that. We done that as I say I will just work on one side now, I did think of panel line washing this but I no, once again, I don't think it needs it. It could post wash it. Yeah, with these, uh, you can wash. You could do a wash with these pencils if you want. Light rust. Let's have a look. Right, let's do some bits of streaking and things like that. So. Need to give the rust somewhere where it would come from. Uh, let's find a brush. Try and um, alter the angle of this so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Uh, 
Let's try that. Put that on there. Put that there. <coughs> oh, I've got a great collection of paints and stuff. Yeah, it just patterns. It just comes along over time. Yeah, it's always. Whenever you go, whenever you go shopping for paint, always put an extra. Even though you might not need it, put an extra paint in your shopping basket, and that way, your paints and your weathering products they all build up. Uh, Ted Sprugler, can I tell you about a new YouTube bottler who may, who needs more views? Yeah, go on. Yes, put it up. Yeah, let us know, Spru. Uh, we're all in the same game. We all like to help. So we've done that one. Let's uh, see if we get it down a little bit more. God. There we go. Yeah, I'm not trying to make it as a tutorial, just a little bit more interesting so you can see what's going on. I remember seeing Fearless Away in a fair of Portsmouth in the early 2000s. Uh, yeah, it. Um, she was a nice ship, sort of the old style. Um, post war ship. Uh, built a bit like HMS Belfast, it's in on the Thames. Uh, amphibious carrier, wasn't it? Uh, full of Royal Marines, just went about grunting everywhere. Uh, we'll do some medium rust. We'll put some like rust on the edges where down here on like the mud guards where rocks and things might have been thrown up and damaged the paint. Uh, Genesis Designs and Model Craft. Check her out. She's awesome. Right. I'll check her out. Yeah, I will do. Yeah, invite her. Yeah, what you want to do, I thought, um, uh, Sprue, is yeah, invite her along. Tell her about us. Tell her come and join in the community and pimp herself. Obviously not on the e-models because uh, that's different, but yeah. It's, tell her about the YouTube, tell her about the Boom Hut. And she can come along and pimp her, yeah, pimp her channel. Oh, I don't need that one, I need another brush. I can't find it. I have cleaned my brushes, yes. Look, the cup is empty paint yeah the cup is empty I've cleaned my brushes <coughs> uh, don't know what, where is it at I can't find it I can't find my brushes oh this is let's try that one Uh, 
Now what I will do, I'll show you how this salt streaks works. <clears throat> Shake and shake. It's a it's an enamel wash. I'm sort of flitting about between everything. I'd, I'd normally what I'd normally do is do all one type of chipping and things like that uh, and streaks and things, and then I move on to another one. But because because I'm with you, I try to make things a bit more interesting. I'll flit about. And show you things so I don't need that brush I need one of the washing brushes I've got these cheap ones that are great for washes because you don't want to get too much nasty enamels on, <coughs> on your good brushes so this is just a matter of what you would find is that you would get salt that would gather and then just like um, weathering streaks and <coughs> uh, rainwater streaks and things like that it would it would wash it would drag itself down but it would stain uh, it's it's like when the the seawater gets splashed and then the seawater evaporates but just leaves the salt behind. And what I'm doing here is doing it so that the, the salt water has gone into this seam around here and then ran down and then worked its way out leaving some streaks in there and it gives a, a different just that different look just a different color <coughs> Let's take a bit of that off. Just using some woodless thinners just to take some off. And as it'll dry, it'll dry out a little bit clearer. A little bit more transparent. on the front <coughs> I love to build the one three five hundred one three fifty wasp bite hmm. I some of them capital ships were amazing the wasp bite hood Prince of Wales they were amazing So the, the dreadnought of the time. Yeah. <coughs> Getting some on there. Oh, Pete says he joined the Sea Cadets in the 70s, bought a model of Fearless at around the same time uh, and his fascination had been struck ever since. I was in the Sea Cadets, yeah. 
uh, about the 70s yeah <clears throat> uh, I was I was a marine cadet though we had yeah, there was two two sections of the sea cadets you could join the marines um, or you could join the sea cadets the naval s s part of it but and I, jo I joined the marines it was fun because uh, we did like field craft and map reading and things like that which is stood me in good stead for today because um, because fell walking yeah it's good good to be able to read a map it's something that um, never left me really I've already uh, I, from my my part in the sea cadets um, I, I think that's where my fascination with maps and stuff came in because we did because we did field craft and map reading stick a bit of that off T.S. Neverick Bromley Common uh, I was in T.S. Sovereign Baron Furnace yeah, it was a great time I wish I only wish more kids of today would do have similar interests uh, it yeah I, th I think in the 70s though it was I think a bit of a recruitment type thing for the Navy or the army cadets or, or whatever uh, but now it's it's more of a, a youth club So put a bit more of this on. Ah, still enough in the brush. Just to do some more streaks at the front. And I also think at the bow it's going to take a bit of battering of shoving and pushing so that's going to, that's going to take a, a bit of battering and have a few rust streaks on there as well. Uh, Graham T.S. Rally was ours. All oh, right, it rally was the um, the Royal Navy uh, training school, wasn't it? Was there any uh, was there any connection with T S Rally and T or was it Royalist? No, it was Rally. Yeah, because I actually got as far well, I got as far as joining the Navy. Um, I applied to join the Navy, and on leaving school and I got as far as being sent my travel warrant um, to and enlistment notice to join uh, H HMS rally on I think it was like the 10th of October uh, I actually got that far uh, however uh, shortly before the recruitment day I got accepted into the shipyard as an apprentice so I took that one as I took that instead so that's that's why I didn't join the Navy Looking good. Uh, you should have joined the Rock Apes REF Regiment. Talk about nuts. Uh. <coughs> oh, uh, 
Uh, Graham says, I did the same, loved the secret. Spent a week at RES Lossima, sitting in Shackleton, watching the Jaguars coming and going, and flying in the de Havilland Dove great days. Yeah, we, it, they certainly... It was a, it was an adventurous ch- time joining the cadets, wasn't it? Because you did actually do a lot. You got, uh, for want of a better word, you got your money's worth out of it. Didn't you? It was great. <clears throat> now these streaks that I'm doing are not. They're not really chips. It's it's more if you if you look at a any type of ship, even warships that are kept nice and spick and span, you'll see rust streaks. They just develop and they run down and drag everything with them. So can put some in there. We'll give it a source of rather than just having a rust streak that doesn't appear any from anywhere. Just we'll give it we'll give it a reason to be there. So you do. I'm seeing that. Say like that. Oh, where are we at? HMS Rally was with training centre. My brother-in-law went there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's where I could have gone. Oh. TS Thunder, West Ham, East London. Then I went and joined the Royal Navy. That's Martin Canny. So Martin, you must, you must have gone to Rally, did you? Did you go to Rally? Uh, one of the officers in our TS had previously been based at Raleigh in Portsmouth. <coughs> uh, HMS Dolphin, that was a submarine base. So, yeah, that was a submarine training centre, wasn't it? HMS Dolphin. Yeah, uh, so somebody's talked about the rock. Yeah, Athol's talked about the rock apes. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah the um, RAF regiment. Yeah, I had a friend who was in the RAF regiment. Yeah, and <coughs> yeah, the only I used to kid him that the only reason the RAF regiment was there was just to guard the naffy in times of war, just to make sure the the naffy didn't get uh, taken. Good metal. So, you know, we can <clears throat> let's do a little bit of dark rust, do some of these steps. Just a bit more. <clears throat> what I'll do, I'll use the pencils in this sort of area. It's a nice and flat, easy to use, the pencils on this. But when I come to do the running gear, I'll do that with some of the uh, rust washes. Enamel, yeah, uh, rust wash. And some pigments, I'll put them in there. I'll just do edges of like the running gear. And springs. I'll do some rust washes over the springs because there's some nice uh, ribbed detail in there that will pick that out quite nicely. <coughs> Where's my brush gone? Remember, if you're using these pencils, damp, damp brush, not moist. I just you can just drag drag the pigment down. That's it. See see how it's going together. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, Graham said he went to Yarrow's in the Clyde instead of joining up. That's yeah, that's what I did. Um, what happened was I I went to the recruitment centre, and the the Navy had promised me all sorts of things. Um, I I wanted to be an electrician, but it seemed that at the time the Navy didn't want to recruit artificers as they were called. So they 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 were going to take me on as a uh, an able seaman or a junior seaman, but they promised me that if I uh, did well and progressed and got all my exams and things, that they could put me f they they could then I could then apply to be an artist, an electrician. And yeah, they were gonna, they were gonna do all sorts. This navy, it was, it was magic. They were even gonna teach me to drive, um, uh, and things like that. And then you, you wonder later on in life, don't you? How, how are they gonna teach you to drive on a submarine? Oh, yep, yeah, that's it. But yeah, I, I, I'd done some questioning and, and ask questions. Uh, about joining the Navy and it seemed like they were just spinning a pack of lies well not a pack of lies but a little bit more generous with the truth so yeah I think I did make the right decision and went in the shipyard uh, I went in the shipyard with the intention of eventually leaving and then join the Navy but by the time I'd done a four year apprenticeship and met women and drink and uh, other things like that, parties, yeah, that, that, yeah, that had all gone out the window. So I didn't join the Navy. So that's why. <coughs> the army sleeps under the stars, the Navy, the Navy navigate by the stars. <laughs> the RAF judges the accommodation by the number of stars. <laughs> uh, I wish I went into the Royal Navy, the Fleet Air Arm. Oh. Uh, I've been watching, got Ted on the big telly. Oh, yeah, the big telly. Ooh. <coughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> they never teach you driving aircraft carry if you don't stop in time you go off the edge <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe that's what they were going to teach me to drive yeah they weren't going to teach me to drive a car they were just going to teach me to drive drive an aircraft carrier not, not on one Ah, right. So we can see see how can it can it work out how this is all going together now just as I say I've just been using pencils for this. But yeah. Uh, as a shipwright said, I was promised to be a uh, promised a straight path to being a hull artist. It was never going to happen. Yeah, it was never going to happen that I was going to be an electrician either. It seems like the navy has quarters to fill. Like they wanted the, at the time we joined, they they might want um, twenty junior seamen to join as sonar operators. Yeah, it's a great job while you're in the navy. It just not a lot of calling for sonar operators in Civvy Street. So yeah, but but next week you might have gone along and they might have wanted twenty artificers of differing trades. So. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, the Navy isn't a great life. Uh, I'm sure it is, and uh, I'm sure that there are 
many people, maybe even some watching this channel tonight that um, are well into uh, armed, uh, were part of our armed service. And thank you, yes, thank you for your service. It's been good. So i just a touch more, I think, with this little wash. Oh yeah, one of the I, I I do like weathering vehicles. When it comes to weathering, you could just sit quietly and <coughs> uh, take a few hours just to chill out, put some music on, and enjoy the weathering part of it. Because it can never be wrong. <coughs> could never be wrong uh, in my yeah I remember the adage of less is more because that's how you do it yeah just take your time just do it just enjoy it uh, uh, but but think naturally um, if you if you were doing let's let's say let's do a chip if you're doing a chip here what I would do first, I would use some maybe gunmetal graphite and make, make a hole or representation of a hole in the paintwork. I don't think you can see this, but never mind. Yeah, do a little mark as so though it's been a, a chip in the paintwork and then the rust has got underneath that. Uh, we could do some edge it in, in an aluminium a shiny bit uh, maybe needs a little bit more water uh, a bit more water Uh, the lads, uh, the lads I take my half to at the X-ray of gun teams. I met a few, and they've been great. Uh, we, yeah, we had a visit from a gun team here in town. Um, I think it was at the launch of one of the submarines. Could have been the first Trident or something like that. So it was some memorable, something memorable, and the gun team came up and did a display outside the town hall. So if we, yeah, if we go back to this, if we do a bit, of, if you want to do a, a, a random streak in the middle of something, give it a reason to be there. So what we've done with this one now is that I don't know if you can make it out I've got a little chip in the paintwork and then that started to rust and the rust has run down then hit this ledge here and run across and then run down again so yeah it just gives it that more natural type look Dragging it down, thinning it out a bit. Maybe make the chip a little bit 
more pronounced. doing over here is just wetting wetting the pencils because you can use the pencils wet or dry some streaking dirt. Streaking dirt. Now I remember, yeah, I did say I was going to do some streaky grime on this, but I can do that with a pencil uh, of the same name, Streaking Dirt. Similarly, it's green, so we could do some slimy type things. When we come to do the decks, we can do some sliminess in the areas where water would probably sit and be, become greasy and slimy. <coughs> anyway, we could go on with this for an absolute age. I think, as I say, I think what will happen, we'll, I'll do a bit on it when, like I did um, get round to finishing this, and I've only done that little bit at the moment. We're getting there. <clears throat> but uh, I think what we'll do now, we'll put this to one side, clear the bench a little bit, and we'll call it finished for the purposes of the weekly shows and we'll have a look at what we're going to do next so let's let's start and clear things up so there we are there's the the land land the boat tank as yeah as i said we've already done a little bit so but it's getting there uh i've just got that set of pencils i uh, not had a chance to use them yet. Yeah, use them, um, Phil. They're great. Um, they, they, they are really easy to use. Um, I wouldn't say that they're um, a replacement for your washes and things like that. But certainly, they're a good addition to it. They're a good addition to, you, um, to your armoury. Uh, especially for like what we've been doing there uh, and or you just want to do a little bit of weathering but you don't want to get the whole set out because uh, maybe you just want to do a little bit of um, edge highlighting and things like that you know chips uh, and things like that but yeah they're good so that's the that done clear this up put these to one side let's move all this stuff out of the way I've, I've even been that concentrating tonight. I forgot to have a drink. Right, 
put them away. Let's move that. There's the dog. Puppy. Right. Ouch. So, we can now have a look at what we're going to start and build next week. Ah, right. And, yes, without further ado, we can announce that we're going to build the, well, I'm going to build this. And Hughes will be along with me uh, to see me do this. Um, yeah, we, we discussed it before. This is the um, Mark 5, Mark 4, Churchill, Mark 7. Complicated, I know, but there's a reasoning behind it. Uh, this is the one with the extra crew. Uh, this is It's got the crew. And it also has... Or the edge of the box. It's got a farmer, a driver, a gunner and a commander. So it's got extra people with this because it's got... The little cart uh, with the bucket and milk cans and wine bottles and things on it and like that so yeah so yeah once again it's Tamir um, so it I can't foresee there being any problems with this build um, let's have a look in the box see what's in the box we'll do, we'll do a bit of a quick box review this week uh, yep once again lots of just usual um, to me uh, instructions um, optional now right I don't know what the option is in here but I'm not sure if these guys are in here too uh, right can anybody uh, without having a look uh, maybe I can have a look Yeah, it does look like there is some extra military figures in here. If, it, if anybody can, can can confirm that, if you've built this kit. Uh, the, the vehicle itself um, doesn't appear to be overly com complicated. Uh, yeah, it's got the battery, place for the battery for when it was would have been motorised. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look overly complicated. It looks a nice, easy, quick build tank. Uh, so we can get this together in no time. So yeah, if anybody could confirm for me whether or not these guys are in this kit. Because it looks like there's three crew. And then it goes on to say that there's two extra figures. Be interesting enough. Be nice to make uh, a diorama for this if <coughs> if I can muster up the interest to do a diorama. There's the farmer. Yeah, it does look like there's extra. Uh, uh, it does look like there's extra so, uh, personnel in it. Extra soldiers. Uh, yeah, this is the old kit. It's the one with the trailer. Uh, yeah, the farmer's the farmer's cart in it. It's the one with that in it. Uh, Steve one three one says yes, they're in it. Good. Yeah. So yeah. So do some figure painting. Um, I I have had a thought about uh, the tracks. Once again, very nice to me. A tracks. I might, um, if I can, uh, get the funds together. Um, have a look at getting some of the fuel tracks, the metal uh, tracks for this one, because uh, I fancy making a nice go of this. Uh, so we, I'll uh, I'll research the costings of some of that, and if my pocket money allows it, uh, I'll, I will go and do that. But that's it. That's what we're going to start. We'll probably start that next week. Uh, so in the meantime, I'll do some. Um, uh, new thumbnails for the channel. Uh, I get it up. I, yeah, it's quite a nice, it's quite a nice kit. Always fancied it. I've never built it. It's not actually my kit. Um, 
it's a son, it's the kit belonging to my son so yeah he won't say I can't build it because he won't me to do it for him but that's what we're going to do uh, we're going to do that for next week we'll start that we'll put the the land of Vashu Schlepper uh, to one side I say it might get a reprise when it comes out if we find a dull a bit of a, a time where we can't do something else we'll fetch the last of Vashu Schlepper out and we'll do some uh, more work on that some weathering or something and we'll do some up uh, you're not really going to see much of the tracks. Uh, yeah, because I know that across the top the tracks are in, all covered. But down here, uh, yeah, I might. Uh, I'll consider, I'll, I'll sort of do some research and find out how much they cost and things like that and whether or not I think it's worth doing. But yeah, they're quite nice. The, the vinyl tracks are quite nice. Uh, Ted stole from his own son. Yes. Yeah, uh, I'll just do it. Yeah, it hopefully he doesn't watch these streams, so I'll just do it and build it and present it to him. There, so we can go. Uh, right. Uh, so that's that's it for tonight. I think uh, we're round about the witching hour again. Finishing time. Time for turning it off. Uh, yeah, I've done some weathering on the land. Wash a schlepper. Let's fetch it back. And that will be it for tonight. Uh, for this. Build. yeah lots more work you can you can start you can weather these things for on and on and on uh, and go and I've just done this little section on the whole once the the cabins done and the tracks are done as well and it's tied all together it won't look, look as stark or anything like that uh, so we could do that and we'll get on with it right uh, yes I'm gonna leave it all for now anyway don't forget, uh, if you do want to subscribe uh, to the Skipper Scale models, you can see me on Patreon. Uh, as I say, for something just like a pound a month, you can join the crew and see some behind the scenes sort of stuff. Uh, I'm doing that for when I build the, I'm building the Titanic and such. Or you super chat just to help support the channel, help buy paint and models and things like that. And, and it keeps it going. Uh, and doing stuff for you guys but thank you very much uh, and we'll see you all next week uh, it's Chris's turn on Sunday for the Warhammer but I'll be around in chat or something somewhere uh, don't forget like and subscribe if you haven't already uh, because I may occasionally find time when I can do uh, an impromptu live stream about something but uh, in the meantime Thank you very much for joining me tonight. Thank you very much for coming along and keeping me company. Uh, time at the bench is, uh, yeah, I do like time at the bench and I do like interacting with you guys out there in chat land. So thank you very much and we'll see you all again uh, same time next week when we're doing that one. We'll start that one from the very beginning. Watch, watch how I ceremoniously cut the first piece from the sprue. So thank you all. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, where do we go from here? What do we usually do? Oh, where do we go? Yeah. There we go. Bye.